Hey yo, what is up knights, Aegis Rick here, and this will be part one of what's going to be an in-depth guide on how to properly complete all of the other's dungeons with minimal loss of life for both yourself and all of your party members. I won't be covering every last detail, but enough to ensure that you are at least competent. You seriously don't want to be that guy who ruins it for everyone else. So without further ado, let's talk about the first dungeon, the Goblin Kingdom. Overall, Goblin Kingdom is a fine mix between gimmicks and just pure killing. There are two gimmick rooms and one mini boss room before the final boss. This is one of the few dungeons however that will require items out of you so here's a packing list you should have before entering. For a particular gimmick you're gonna need at least three oil flasks, one sky tree nut, and one bomb. Of course it wouldn't hurt to bring more. I brought a hundred of each so there. Status effects are scarce throughout this dungeon but bleeding in particular could occur in the first room and if it's not cured it can do some serious harm. And of course I will always suggest to bring the provisional HP, MP, and buff pots as you see necessary. But anyway guys, are you ready? Let's go! Room 1 is pretty standard and features a bunch of goblins. Harmless right? Almost. You see they're these goblin lunatics which cause the bulk of the problem in this room. They have a single stab attack that when connected can cause bleeding. And if you're bleeding this will make them enraged and just keep stabbing like well, a lunatic. They can and will stab you till you die, so simply try to avoid getting hit by them. The bigger thing to worry about than their knife however is that if a fellow lesser goblin dies, the goblin lunatic gets buffed. And by buffed I mean he gets his health restored and raised significantly. His HP can go from a standard you know, 5 or 6 bars to a total of 90 bars in no time, so try to focus on taking them out first. You could do that or try to use your various skills to group all of the goblins together so you and your team can deeps AoE them all out at once once. Whatever happens, just try and kill the lunatics while not getting stabbed yourself. It's a surefire way to clear the room. Now before entering room 2, you want to establish who is going to be the feeder in the group. Have you chosen one? Okay, good. Immediately upon loading into the map, all non-feeders will run as fast as they can to the bottom right of the map. The reason for this is to get as far away as you can from the mob so that the feeder gains the mob aggro and has more room to work with. Now okay, if you're the feeder, this is how it works. Purple goblins are shot in from the left side of the screen from a cannon. This happens periodically and the spawn rate is quite slow. Initially you have the slow minion goblins, but over time you'll get different types which are even slower and faster. But look here, type is not all that important. Your timing however is. Let me explain. The machine on the right needs to be fed these goblins, and if he's not fed every 7 seconds or so, he just decides to explode, causing a map wide explosion most likely killing everyone on the screen. We obviously don't want that. He'll give you a countdown of 5 seconds every time he's nearing his one hit KO explosion attack. Once fed a goblin, this will reset the timer, and you have to repeat this process again until he's defeated. Now it is the feeder's job to push and or lure the goblins near the mouth of the machine to feed it. But you've got to do it slowly. It is certainly possible to just throw all the goblins at him as fast as you can, but you're limited by how fast the goblins spawn from the left side of the screen. You do it too quick and you won't have any goblins to work with, and boom goes the dynamite. Instead, wait to feed the machine every time the main countdown timer is around 3 or 2 seconds and you should be fine. You'll almost always have at least a few goblins available and you won't run the risk of running out. Use your grab moves and other push type skills to quickly maneuver the goblins to where you want them to be. Now another point of note is that every time the machine eats a goblin, he also does a much smaller explosion in his general area. This will severely damage any players and goblins that are caught in the blast, so be mindful of that otherwise you could wipe out a group of goblins prematurely. You'll have to feed the goblin machine about 15 or 16 times before he finally gives up. Alright, so we kind of got a half and half here. Half gimmick, half mini boss battle. The gimmick is simple. You've got three trees, each manned by a goblin that is annoyingly dropping these leaf satchels from the sky. If you allow them to sit for too long without attacking them, a random Tau will be summoned, including those super giant ones and the Tau King Shouda. It makes no sense if you think about it. Even if they spawn, however, they aren't really all that harmful. Just keep hitting the goblins and the satchels, and eventually they'll fall off and stop their bowl where you can easily finish them off. The threat then is the actual mini boss. He is a spear type goblin who has a 
myriad of attacks. I won't bother trying to describe all of them, just the important ones. He starts off the fight camouflage, and while he's in this mode, he is untargetable. Just ignore him, basically. Sometimes he casts these undodgeable spear traps to random party members. While caught, the party member is completely immobilized, and the only way to save them is by having another party member break them free. If not, well, they'll take some minor damage otherwise as the trap explodes. After some time, he will be targetable. Now, this will be a reoccurring theme with many of the mini bosses in the other verse, but some of them will react negatively to whenever a cube skill is used. I'll make sure to bring that up every time because it's often a real important point to make. You need to keep a mental note as to which mini bosses you shouldn't use cubes on. This is because you can easily wipe your party out otherwise, so listen up. In this case, if a cube skill is used, the mini boss will briefly gain invincibility, have a little bit of reactionary dialogue, and throw some powerful blue spears immediately in front of them. If hit, it can do some significant damage, so be careful. It should be noted though that this reaction from the mini boss itself has a cooldown, so if he uses the blue spear attack accompanied with the dialogue, you are now free to cast as many cube skills as you want on him without retaliation at least for a short duration of time. Some parties recommend not to use cube skills at all on this guy. I merely suggest that you be mindful as to whether or not he's already used the retaliation attack. It may be useful to set off his reaction skill purposefully so you can dispatch him immediately afterwards with all of the cube skills that you have. Room 4 requires the least amount of explanation. In the middle is a very weak summoner who can summon other pretty weak goblins. She however is surrounded by pretty beefy goblins who can throw trees at you. And when I say throw trees, these these bitches throw huge fucking thousand year oaks at you. Don't be alarmed though, as I don't think anything even does any damage in this room. The goblins are tanky and take a while to kill, but just group them up and dispatch them quickly with all of your hard hitting skills. Before going into room 5, again we want to delegate someone to be this time, the bomber. The bomber must make sure to shortcut the aforementioned items I told you to bring, oil flask, sky tree nut, and the fire bomb. The rest of the party members, you'll just need to shortcut the oil flask. Now let me briefly tell you what is supposed to happen in the next room. See, there's this machine you're supposed to protect from waves and waves of goblins that are comically trying to kamikaze into the machine. If you successfully defend against all the waves after a while, you'll just win, and you move on. If enough goblins run into the machine, however, it will trigger a carpet bomb flurry attack which more than likely will wipe out the whole room and you lose. By that, I just mean you die and the machine blows up and then you move on to the next room anyway. Now all of what I just said, however, is a giant waste of time. This is because if the machine explodes, the room is automatically completed. Now you can see where we're going with all these oil and bombs here. But you've got to be quick. Immediately upon entering the room, everyone, run up to the proper distance and start oiling the machine. It might be overkill, but I suggest everyone oil flask it two or three times for good measure. Next, all non-bombers run to the spot you just oiled, namely right on top of the machine. This part is critical. The bomber now must throw a sky tree nut followed by the fire bomb. The sky tree nut is in order to knock down all of the party members and allow them an opportunity to use their quick rebound skill to iframe the incoming one-shot move after the detonation. Oh, did I forget to mention? If the machine blows up, it one-shots everything on the screen. Sorry, bomber, but you gotta take this one for the team. What you say? This is why I suggest that the bomber have some type of iframe move that they can use to avoid the explosion. This can be done in a myriad of ways, so I won't bother. But if all else fails, it really is only one token to save you guys plenty of time. Now let me take this time to explain how all boss fights generally go down in the other verse. All bosses more or less have attacks or phases that are triggered, usually when their HP reaches a certain point, or after a certain amount of time. Just note that because of this predictable nature of the bosses, some phases can be outright skipped or ignored by abusing CC or simply out damaging an enemy before they get a chance to go to their next phase. There are hardly any phases that absolutely must be skipped by using this method however, and you should be able to deal with them all, but it is often helpful to at least try, especially for those particularly long or annoying phases and attacks. Now you can freely use all of your Q skills and crowd control, so don't be scared to throw everything you have at the boss, unless otherwise specified, that's what you should be doing anyway. If you know one of your teammates has a good assist, don't waste the party cooldown on yours, and just be considerate as to what's best for the fight. 
So keeping all that in mind, let's talk about this guy. The first phase I consider relatively harmless. He's on this pedestal being carted around by goblins and will attempt to ram you all the way into the wall. Other than that, I don't often see him doing much else. Just stand either inside of him or slightly below him to avoid getting rammed to death. After doing a certain amount of damage, the carriage will explode and he fights you instead on foot. Now if you're consistent in keeping him hit stunned for the whole fight, it is possible to kill this guy outright in this basic phase. His second phase on foot however is particularly more dangerous. This guy is basically a lightning shaman and will blast you with various lightning based attacks. They are harmful but if you stun lock him you won't often get a chance to see any of the dangerous attacks on his own. Instead you merely have to be mindful of two different gimmicks which can potentially deal serious damage to the whole party. First is an AoE lightning storm that covers the entire map but one circle directly in the middle of the room. This attack is telegraphed by a single glowing and blinking green circle alerting the team to run to that location. Oftentimes, it is obscured by this skull in the middle of the room so don't miss it or be confused. That point is the safest place in the room. In fact the skull is part of a different attack which is potentially more dangerous. Well that is if you allow three of these flaming rock shrines to be populated on the map at one time the entire party will be instantly killed with a one hit KO attack. Easy way to avoid that. Just have someone destroy those rock structures every time you see them. Other than that guys, I got no other tips for you. He jumps around sometimes and is invulnerable when he does so, but if you keep the pressure on him and stay mindful of those two attacks, he is a pretty simple boss. But anyway guys, thanks for watching. I hope I was able to explain the Goblin Kingdom Otherverse dungeon for you, and if you listened and followed everything I've said, your party should have no reason to be angry with you. In the next video, we'll be covering the next Otherverse dungeon, Castle Nebulous, which is considered the most gimmicky of all the Otherverse dungeons. Catch you guys then.